Snap to cover. <laughs> Tutorial. So here we are. We're going to make a sandbag bunker today. Here you'll see everything we're going to be using. Uh, one thing you're going to need is some oven baked clay. A uh, number of companies make this. You can usually get it at most art supply stores. We're only going to be using half in this video. Uh, it should make a wall about this size. It should cost you about 90 cents to use half of this. I think they come at $1.80 up to like $3 depending upon what brand you need. You don't need good stuff. Here we have a uh, clay sculpting tool. Uh, it's really nice. You can use a butter knife if you have one of those, but it's got a nice, uh, nice edge on it for cutting them in half, and it's also got a nice point for a stitching technique. Uh, here we have our towel. We're going to be using this to texture the clay. Give it that sandbag uh, burlap type texture. If you had actual burlap, that would work great, but this works excellent. Um, the one thing you're going to want is a small texture on your on your towel. Uh, this one has little rivets. They're great. You're going to need a old paintbrush. We're going to be using this to do a dry brush effect on it. Uh, you don't want a good brush. You're also going to want some primer. You can get it at a hardware store. You don't need good stuff. Just grab some uh, cheap primer. Then we're going to get some paint. Uh, here we're using like a yellowish uh, Vallejo paint. We're going to use a, a dark one, a medium colored one, and uh, a light shade. So grab something. and It depends on what color you want to do them. They don't have to be uh, a sandy color, but that's the way we're going with the, on this one. Uh, and that's the technique I used on this original sandbag. Lastly, because we're doing some dry brushing, you're going to want to have a paper towel on hand. So let's open up this bag of clay. And what we're going to use is just, like I said, split this in half. It'll make plenty of sandbags. You should be able to make a wall out of uh, just half of this. 90 cents worth of clay awesome probably some of the cheapest terrain you'll make so what you want to do is kind of knead it you want to you know turn it into a ball squish it around get it get it working get it warm uh, clay tends to work a little bit better once it's been heated up so squish it in your hands a little bit work it back and forth then what we're going to do is just roll it you're going to roll it back and forth and make it longer and longer and eventually you'll come up with something that looks like this. Uh, this is over two feet long here, you know, just working it back and forth. Eventually you'll, uh, you'll get to something like this. Uh, if you want them smaller, just keep doing it. It'll get thinner and thinner. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our towel and we're going to place this on the table. Uh, we're going to want to cut this in half cause it's actually too big for our, uh, for our towel so I'll just split that in half right there uh, pick it up just be careful that you don't break it uh, you spent all this time making sure that it was all uniform size you want to you know you don't want it to break then we're going to take the paper towel and fold it over and then keep it tight that'll give it a nice texture you want to almost press uh, you don't want to lose the shape but you want to impress that template or the, uh, the texture onto your clay and I'm going over and pressing it in a little bit then we're going to take our your knife to find the edge of it push it in a little bit there figure out how big you want your sandbags to be and then just press down and then we're going to go ahead and do this repeatedly over and over and over and over again until we get to the end. Uh, one thing you want to do is you want to try and keep it tight. You see me uh, going back and making sure that the, the towel doesn't push away a little too much. And then, ta-da, we got some sandbags. So this right here made uh, one half of that two feet, made about 18 pieces. Then what we need to do is it doesn't completely cut all the way through, so now we're just going to take our knife and split those. 
the end pieces aren't going to have what we want, so you can just kind of throw those away. You can actually work the uh, the two ends together and make a couple more sandbags. You'll go through and cut them all up. Now here what we're going to do is we're going to fix the ends so that they look even more like a sandbag. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the edge of your knife and you're going to push down and flatten out that edge. And then flip it around and flatten down the other side. The other thing is you don't want to touch them too hard because you don't want to lose that texture. If you push them too hard, you'll get the texture of your fingerprint, and that's not good. And then here we're going to do stitching. You're just going to try to tap the the seam. Uh, and that'll, when you end up painting it, it'll actually look like the stitches, like someone actually stitched the sandbag together. Uh, and it gives it a nice little effect. And it'll, it'll look great when you uh, start dry brushing. So just kind of tap. You don't want to poke too hard because you don't want to go through, but you want to just do that. So we're just going to go through and quickly uh, tap through the rest of these. It doesn't take too long. But just... Uh, Yep, push flat and then run a line of dots across each side. It takes a few minutes to get this process done, but uh, once you get into a rhythm, it actually goes a lot quicker. And you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but it, it does add a nice effect. All right, so here we've done all two feet or more of sandbags. Now what we got to do is actually start pushing these. You'll see that they're uh, a little a lumpy and so we're gonna kind of squish these together they'll mold together and make a wall the thing you want to do is you're gonna to want to use the towel to push them together not your finger otherwise you're gonna have your fingerprint on it and you don't want that so what we're gonna do is line them up we're gonna make an L-shaped wall here should make for a nice uh, a nice effect You don't have to make it's individual wall. You can use them as decoration pieces too. Um, but this is a nice ER1, ER2 terrain. So make our first line and then we'll start stacking up our second row. And then we're just gonna use the, the paper or the, the towel to push down. And that'll secure them together and also uh, reinforce that texture. So just keep doing this, put a piece down. And you want to make sure that you're putting the next sandbag in that gap, almost like a brick effect, because that's how you uh, you fill the gaps with your sandbag so that no water comes through. And if you guys ever have a mini flood, this will work perfect. You guys will be all set. You'll have all kinds of sandbag bunkers. You know how to make some more, so you'll, uh, you'll be able to keep those mini floods under control. There we go. More and more, stacking it higher and higher. My kind of my goal in this was to make it so that when you got into the corner, you'd have ER2. Um, just finding different pieces and going back and forth and just building up that wall to where you want it to be. Now these might be a little bit big in the scale, so you might want to do them a little smaller, but this seems to work. And then what I'm going to do is some of them I missed, so I'm going to go back and just reline those, restitch them. And I'm going to carefully pick this up without putting too much pressure on it. You thought this was a terrain video? No, this is a cooking show. I'm going to turn the stove on to bake. We have it set at 350 degrees. And I'm just going to pop, pop it in there. That's it. Now we wait 15 minutes or so. Let it uh, cook up. Doesn't really matter if we burn it because we're not going to be uh, doing anything color wise. We're just going to prime over it and paint it up. So it doesn't really matter. But 5, 10, 15 minutes, come back and check. Uh, if you smell it smoking, take it out earlier. But should be good. Then, what I'm going to do here is quickly cool it off. So, you're going to grab your spatula and spatula your sandbag off the cooking tray. And quickly move it over to the sink just because we don't like waiting and then just run that over some uh, under some cold water 
pop it out. We're going to do pat dry it. Now we're going to take out our black primer and we're just going to quickly go over this. Uh, for sake of time, we're just going to kind of skip through to uh, the actual painting. But if you've painted models before, I'm sure you get the gist. Here we have the final black primed model. We're going to use beige brown by uh, Vallejo. Uh, we're going to try and do a, a base coat here. So we'll get a little, little bit of that on our palette. And start painting it up. Because this is a base coat, I decided to actually go a little bit brighter on this one than uh, I originally planned. So this is actually going to be my dark coat. Um, we're going to go over the entire model. You want to make sure that you leave a little bit of the black because that'll uh, help reinforce that texture. And even here, you can kind of see it in the video. Uh, I apologize. Uh, this is my first time trying to paint underneath the camera, so I'm not staying completely in, f in frame. Uh, I promise it'll get better in time. I'll clean off my brush. And we'll get ready for the next one. Now we're going to use sand yellow. This is a little bit brighter, more of a sandbag type texture. And what we're going to do is dry brush. If you haven't dry brushed before, you're going to want to use your old paintbrush. Really ragged one, doesn't matter. Put a tiny dab of paint on and then brush it all off on your paper towel. You want to make sure there's almost no paint coming off of it. Uh, you're actually going to have the pigment on your brush, but you're not going to have uh, much of the acrylic, uh, or the liquid acrylic. And then just brush in quick downstrokes. That way the brown will be on the bottom and it'll act as a, a quick shading. Um, if you run out, you can always just go back and add a little bit more, wipe it all off. And quickly go over. This is actually a little bit wet for a dry brush. Um, usually when you do a, a true dry brush, it's a little bit less, but uh, for time's sake, Decided to put on a little bit heavier. Um, so we'll go back and forth over, make sure I catch everything, all the all the top edges on all the sandbags. So there you have it. And now we're gonna go over and do a really extreme highlight. We're gonna take a pale sand color from Vallejo. We're gonna barely tap this, drop it all off, and then you wanna really make sure that this is dry. You're going to barely touch the uh, the top edges. Just dust it a little bit. Give it that sandy texture that you want over like a yellowish sandbag. And there you have it. Now let's, uh, hopefully that was easy to follow. And here are some pictures. I hope you liked that video. Uh, stay tuned for more. We're going to be doing some more painting videos and uh, techniques and tutorials. So look forward to those. And if you use this tutorial and you make your own sandbag bunkers or incorporate them into your next terrain project, uh, pop on over to the forums at snap to cover.com slash forum and let us see what you uh, came up with. Also, if you have any, you know, comments, questions, suggestions, feel free to shoot them our way. Uh, we'd love to hear from you.